wonderful. Um, to my channel. everybody how are you all doing today um i hope everybody is having a wonderful weekend and um i i wanted to say a few things um about the recent content that i've been putting out and i you know i'm really amazed at why or how i've been put under militant attack by specific groups um, who are out here on YouTube to do just that. And I, I merely began this series of endless journeys as a way to try to um, examine these mysterious disappearances of, of travelers uh, or people, individuals who were highly admired and greatly respected and I'm being attacked. And so um, I'm going to attack back. And I'm, whatever YouTube does to me, I don't care. I have filed um, a lawsuit. And I intend to fight this with every grain of strength that I can find and muster up. I don't care if I lose subscribers. But enough is enough. To punish a YouTuber for going into history to look at the details of the mysterious disappearance of Amelia Earhart is fucking ridiculous. Now, do I look like a political or a military person to you? I'm not. And I don't like politics. And I'm going to continue to um, defend myself with whatever means I have. And I, I love it when people put out content like, um, you know, moral issues and moral lessons and stuff like that. Uh, I think that kind of content is very useful on YouTube. And I can surely use some of it myself. But really, a channel um, geared up on how to dole out moral lessons? Not with me, you don't. And so, um, in honor of this beautiful rainy day and my awesome, horrible mood, um, I am taking a little trip to the grocery store, if it stops pouring, to um, pick up some items for a rainy day pizza.
I finally managed to decide uh, that I'm going to be inserting more clips into my snowy day or actually my rainy day pizza um, episode because um, it's been a little bit um, it's been hard to get good footage that I'm happy with, so I, I think I'm going to speak on another YouTuber and as very specific and very general health condition that applies to a good many of us, um, especially after surgery, major surgery. And so stick around if you want to find out more about it. Hi, everybody. Um... I'm kind of debating on whether or not I should go for the walk. It's, um, you know, it's it's a beautiful night. But I, every time I step out of the car, I start feeling these raindrops. And I don't want to wreck my camera. So we'll see if this little bit of drizzle subsides. And then maybe I will catch uh, a half-hour walk or something. So, um, guys... I really want to reach out to this one um, awesome YouTuber who has taken us on a years-long raw food journey. Uh, you know, if I have to go back and, and look at all of his vlogs again, um, it would be a, absolutely an incredible and amazing journey. Um, he started out as a, a regular meat eater, like many of us are. And um, so the thing is, is that he embarked on this um, lifelong dream to... Um, he, he lived it out, guys. He went uh, to Peru to um, live on this astounding uh, mountain property and cultivated these really wonderful and amazing orchards and, and plants and trees. And he believed wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly. Uh, by the time he got to Peru, he believed in the raw food um, meal plan. And guys, as you know, I, I went over the raw food meal plan uh, this past winter as a viable uh, health um, and uh, meal option. Uh, it is, it can be very incredibly healthy. However, not all of our bodies are perfectly um, suited to this really harsh and severe uh, sort of diet that our ancestors used to be forced to follow. And uh, I, you know, I, I really came out with very negative insights as to the raw food um, meal plans. Back then, things that I uncovered I hadn't known before. And I, I still, you know, have to... Um, back myself up and, and say that I have done research and the statistics seem to indicate that yes, many raw vegans or raw food eaters can live very healthy and sustainable lives. However, it does tend to build up. And unless you have uh, a very, um, you know, foolproof way of getting that stuff out of you. Um, even if you do have a foolproof way, it, it still can wreak havoc on your insides. It, it can. And so I'm not lying, guys. Uh, Matt Monarch is a very um, credible and, and uh, very living proof of the fact that raw food eaters have to be very careful, um, especially if they're genetically inclined to have this condition with their colons and their intestines and not being able to digest certain foods properly. And so I, I want to reach out to him and uh, do a little bit of research on one of his recent, most recent health updates, his very recent health update. 
And, you know, I tend to worry about him so much because Matt has, um, by his own accounts that are all published and online, and I hope that he doesn't take offense, he, uh, you know, very recently went over to the other side and as he struggled with a very, very severe and grave um, intestinal illness, and his colon was, uh, as he described, it was really, really, um, it was... It was disintegrated. The health of his colon was disintegrating. And so uh, through surgical procedures and, and operations and, and hospitalization, he was able to uh, manage to get back on his feet. And I, I think he had must have had a, a wonderful and very incredible team of doctors who helped them through all that. Um, so, guys, I, I want to reach out and, and give Matt a little bit back to what he gave us, all this incredible um, information on nutrition and raw food. And his business, his online business, The Raw Food World, is still uh, very much alive and thriving. And so, I, you know, I, I think it's amazing that he has accomplished all you know, specifically his lifelong dream uh, of going to Peru and accomplishing all of those things. And now he has this incredible business. He raised a family in Peru. He has two beautiful daughters. Oh, my goodness. And I'm going to link his channel below because um, he's got awesome footage of his life in Peru and his marriage and his family in Peru. And guys, quite frankly, I have to be very sincere and honest. I needed to stop watching on a daily basis because um, it made me so homesick for my old home abroad. And if you see the uh, atmosphere in these vlogs, uh, especially as he walks among his orchards, the air sparkles. It's so clean. Uh, I could only wish that we had sparkling air like that here. And I also want to uh, ask Matt if, you know, he's considered the fact that one of his, um, you know, he's struggling right now with something that may be um, on its way to mending on its own. I'm not sure. I'm going to talk more about that later. But um, he he seems to be struggling um, with air quality. And I know that every two minutes I get this thing in my chest and we have had horrible air due to lots of forest fires all over uh, Canada and the U.S. So I'm wondering if maybe he needs to take special, extra special care of that. Um, because I know that I, I could very well do with an inhaler from time to time, but I'm not going to bother, um, at least not yet. So, um, guys, I, I, I hope that you um, hang on and listen to me a little later on after I make my rainy day pizza, before I make my rainy day pizza. Uh, very obviously, I'm, I'm giving you these clips on different days, so bear with me. I'm trying to put them in some semblance of a logical scheme so that you can follow along. And I hope that you find some of the information I'm going to be giving you useful. So I know that it's a very common issue, but it, it's got different causes. And so that's why Matt needs to pay, uh, pay special attention to what exactly the doctors are saying, if anything, and what is specifically causing this um, recent fistula. It's called a fistula. And um, whether or not it may have some other um, predisposed conditions that go along with it, I'm not sure. I won't be going over that. But I will be going over the four major types of fistula. So hang on and um, maybe I can get that walk in now.
everybody, I'm home and I don't know how much time I have to talk to you because uh, the security downstairs keeps turning off my my uh, recording. Um, I haven't been able to record at home all month. And so um, <laughs> I'm just uh, gonna let you know that it wasn't much of a day out there, it wasn't decent. I tried to go on my walk, it didn't happen. Um, I tried twice and twice it didn't happen. So um, anyway, I'm going to just um, switch the view, let you see what I have for my haul. And then I'm going to get started on my pizza without any further ado because it's um, 9 o'clock and I haven't done anything all day and I still have to clean the house, um, especially the laundry room where Micha made a mess with her litter box. She made such a mess. So I have to clean. <laughs> so um, I, I just haven't uh, bothered learning how to use my pasta machine yet. So I, I could have made this crust by machine, but I'm going to let that slip by. And so I bought a ready-made crust <laughs> in case you are wondering why. It's because I don't feel like cooking, but I feel like having pizza. So um, as you can see, I didn't buy any pepperoni, any protein, any animal protein. I bought some tofu and I bought mushrooms and um, a red onion and some peppers. I, I'm not going to be using all of that. But uh, maybe I, I think I have two crusts in there, and I think, uh, yes, I, I can probably uh, make two, but it's going to be a big haul for me to eat. So um, I, as it is, I can have the pizza, and I'm not going to put any fat in it. I'm just going to saute the vegetables before I pop the pizza in the oven. And so I did buy olives. I can't resist um, you know, I can't not have olives. And so that's the haul. That came to about $28. I bought uh, one of these because um, uh, I usually eat about one of these a day for the starch solution. But, um, I, you know, it, it's a lot for me to eat, but it does keep me from snacking. And it says in the book, uh, a loaf or 12 slices of bread. So... Um, without potatoes, this should do it. I'm not having the bread today, but um, this should do it. Hi everybody, I'm home and it's such an awesome night. Uh, the air quality is not that great. It's about 22, 23 degrees, so it's not that warm, but um, everything is so thick. It's like you could cut it with a knife. Um, it, it just, the air kind of sticks to your skin. It doesn't feel right, but still kind of, a very beautiful night in a way, uh, despite that. It's not my favorite kind of day, but it's, it was a night where I just didn't feel like coming home. So I stopped off at the market just for three items um, because I normally like to have bread in a sandwich with lettuce and tomatoes. And I didn't see any cucumber or I would have picked those up too. And so I'll just give you a little look and then we'll get um, back into our discussion of the fistula. And I, I should also try to define what a fistula is before anything. So um, hold on and we're gonna get there. So, everybody. 
everybody. Um, I did try to introduce you uh, to Matt Monarch while I was out today. And I just want to again say, I, I want to give a little bit back to Matt because he's been through so much. And he was always such an informed and uh, giving YouTuber. So I thought maybe I could just give a little bit back. And, um, you know, I wish I could bring him a whole cart load of cocoa water right now. What can I say? Um, so anyway, guys, let, um, let's begin with the actual definition of a fistula. So um, I think we can get away with briefly describing a fistula as more or less being a sort of an internal open wound that is caused either by injury or by a recent surgery. And so mostly they are located and classified depending on their type. Now, some of them are, are located near the bladder, some of them are located near the um, other parts of the body, um, between uh, certain organs that are used to eliminate waste, the uterus um, and small intestine. And so it really depends a, a, a great deal on the person's health condition and what has been going on with their health lately in order to properly uh, assess the um, formulation and symptoms of a fistula. And so, um, excuse me, while we can actually um, recognize that sometimes fistulas are um, how do you say that? Artificially created by doctors in circumstances of um, surgery, we can basically um, uh, define them as uh, a reaction to inflammation or um, a, an abnormal connection between vessels and organs. So I, I don't know if I've covered it well enough. I very rarely am able to describe things like this because I'm very squeamish and I don't really uh, grasp the concept uh, of um, blood vessels and, and um, all these wounds in the body. I don't grasp that very well. So you have to forgive me. And it's, it's kind of squeamish to talk about it. But anyway, um, let's get on with our discussion. So guys, there are four general types of fistula or fistulae. And so um, I'm going to just um, label them right now for you and then I'll describe each. So these are the intestinal fistula, the um, extra intestinal fistula, the external fistula, and um, the complex fistula. So. Let's get into this. An intestinal fistula is uh, a form of fistula where gastric fluid um, leaks from one part of the intestine to the other part of the intestine where the uh, folds of the intestine touch. You know how it's kind of curved and you know how it goes inward and outward well, that is where they usually and often develop, depending on what is the precise cause. And so um, this type, okay, then that's it. That's that type of uh, intestinal fistula. Oh, it is making me squeamish. And so um, an extra intestinal fistula is uh, a type of wound or, or formation that occurs when gastric um, fluids leak from the intestine to another organ altogether. For instance, the um, lung or the bladder. 
um, or even the vascular system. And so um, that is really, really difficult and complicated to grasp. But simply, that's what it is. And so external fistula. Okay. In this case, the gastric fluid uh, leaks through the skin itself. And so it's also been known to be called a cutaneous fistula. And it's the sort of fistula, I think, um, that Matt, it could be, I, I'm pretty sure I could be wrong. I, I'm not a doctor by any means. It, it seems that this is the type of fistula that Matt appears to be suffering from. And so when he was on the floor uh, struggling uh, with his coconut water, um, he said that it was coming out of his skin. It, it, okay, maybe some of it was sweat, but I, I think it would have been gastric fluid. And so, um, all right. So um, he, you know, he claimed in his update that um, it was really pouring out of his skin. So I, I would assess that um, this sort of fistula is going to pass. I'm hoping. I'm hoping. Now, I can't tell. Matt has to um, have some better idea of what to expect um, by just simply sitting down with um, a medical person, maybe not necessarily the doctor, maybe a pharmacist, um, anybody who could, if you call ahead and, and ask them to email you or talk to you on the phone about it, um, they will probably be able to do a very good job of letting you know exactly what you could expect from the outcome, the diagnosis. Is it going to go away? Um, that's something that I could never assess uh, because I don't know what what else Matt might be suffering right now. So um, a complex fistula, the last type of fistula that we're going to talk about, is um, a type of fistula that occurs in multiple organs uh, at the same time. And so... Um, that's all I know about the complex fistula. And so, again, it would depend greatly on Matt's uh, actual and real current set of health issues that he has been undergoing and undergone recently. So um, I, I hope that I have uh, helped some of you out there, uh, at least in, in some way, in case that you, you know, to experience this without knowing what it could be, say you hurt yourself internally and you don't know where all this liquid is coming from. Now, um, it's also um, some fistulas lose about 200 milliliters of liquid at a time, others about a cupful. So it's very difficult to determine what exactly Matt is going through right now. I know that he's very uncomfortable and he's very weak. And he doesn't feel like looking up information like this online, most likely. So um, uh, now, what about the treatment? Okay. Um, fistulas are classified differently uh, based on how much gastric fluid steeps through the openings of the uh, skin or the organ or the vessel. And so low output, like I just described, 200 milliliters um, or less um, are, are one type. And the higher ones are the ones that are larger fistulas and will probably take a little more time to heal. So fistulas, actually, on the bright side, fistulas close on their own. But um, only if whatever infection may be causing it is controlled. Now, if, if somebody has a, a flare-up or a new infection, this fistula that may have been healing on its own might flare up again and 
it's, it's just going to take more time. Um, so, uh, also your body has to be, Matt, has to be absorbing enough nutrients um, for your overall health to, to improve and maintain the um, maximize strength. Because if you're not eating or if you're not eating appropriately for what uh, you really have, um, uh, you know, it's just going to take more time and it might not help at all. So I, I really think this is the case, a case where um, any, any fistula, uh, the development of any fistula is a perfect example of when you must consult a doctor. And so um, that's why I do assert that Matt's doctors should be closely monitoring this prog uh, this progress um, because I suspect that even though he says that he was put on antibiotics, they may not be enough to be keeping up with strength. Uh, I, I suspect the antibiotics were being given to him in order to spur the um, healing process. And so, uh, yeah, I, it, it's unbelievable how different some doctors can vary from others in terms of approach. Uh, I don't know if Matt's fistula is caused by other more serious conditions that I will not list here because uh, simply I am not a doctor and I think a doctor should do it. And so um, I, I don't even know if Matt is strong enough to endure the healing process if he's completely dehydrated. So, um, you know, I, I also think that uh, he might need uh, closer medical attention, like on a daily basis. And so doctors do treat most fistulas non-surgically because uh, about nine, uh, we'll say about 80% of fistulas do close on their own within five weeks of treatment. So I don't know if Matt has received any treatment other than antibiotics for the fistula that he has. I don't know if he has more than one. And so uh, again, I don't know where Matt exactly fits into this scenario. So, um, uh, you know, he certainly doesn't appear to be as strong as he could be, and he does seem a bit underweight. So I hope that changes soon. But it's to be expected if you're going through something like this. Um, five weeks is a long time to wait for something to heal, isn't it? And I hope it hasn't been that long um, for Matt. And I hope that it does uh, heal very quickly on its own because I, I think it's time that he got to the bottom of this. And if it doesn't heal, he's got no other alternative. He has to go back to either the ER or, or schedule an appointment with his specialist. So, uh, okay. On the bright side, as we said, uh, fistulas do close on their own. And 90% um, of the time, it is done without surgery. In people who are otherwise healthy, and when they do produce um, small amounts of fluids. So uh, if you're, if you're uh, losing copious amounts of fluids, I would say, okay, it's probably a larger fistula that's going to take probably more time to heal. I don't know. Matt has to be definitely in touch uh, with the proper medical experts because this you know, it, it, it's not it's not good for it to go untreated or unanswered. And so fistulas, uh, fistulae mo most often develop after abdominal surgery um, or as a result of chronic digestive disorders. Well, Matt falls into both of these categories. Here is my one piece of advice for any person out there who is experiencing um, these uh, weird liquid outputs. And so talk with your doctor 
about your wrists and how to spot uh, other symptoms of a developing fistula and how to treat them. Um, it might be one doctor's way to use antibiotics. I'm not sure if that's the best way. Antibiotics um, decrease your resistance uh, to fight uh, bacteria, for the body to fight bacteria on its own. So I'm not sure if that was the best idea. We don't know. And so um, this would probably be a, a very difficult uh, health condition to heal without any expert um, assistance or advice. And so, Matt, I hope that you're feeling better soon. And I hope that you get a chance to talk to your medical professional in, in greater depth. Um, and if you can't, uh, I would maybe say go to a walk-in or a pharmacist or maybe some of your family members or friends can assist in getting you that vital information that you're lacking right now. So anyway, guys, that's the end of our um, fistula discussion for tonight. And um, yeah, that's it. And so everybody, um, I have uh, integrated a couple of days worth of clips into this. Uh, video. I hope it's not going to be too long. And so um, I just, you know, I, I, I've been battling with the bad weather. That's basically why I'm out of whack. I haven't been responding to you as regularly, uh, like at different intervals, because I'm really, you know, pushed uh, for pressure. I'm pressured into trying to plan out uh, my upcoming comment, uh, content. And so uh, that will probably include most likely one more missing kid case for this week. And um, I, I want to get to work on the Titanic story. And I, I shouldn't be blurting it out to you, but I, I feel comfortable talking to you about my upcoming content. And so... Um, I, I hope that you've all enjoyed listening and watching. And please don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye for now.